All right, welcome. Could you please introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your company? Okay,、um, so I'm Ine Kusher.、Um, I'm from Nu. Nu is、um, a company that takes a very systemic approach to longevity. So we do a systems biology based kind of、uh, deciphering of your human self. So we analyze your genome, epigenome, microbiome, telomeres, blood biomarkers, and so on, creating your quite unique human digital twin. And through that, we kind of Help you understand first of all, basically, what makes you you. What are your fundamentals? What have you been kind of up to until now in your life? So basically, what is driving certain you know health aspects of your body, of your you know gut health, of your you know brain health, blood, etc. How you're aging? You know, you you get to see your not just your age clocks, but what is affecting your age clocks. You're seeing kind of you know actionable insights into how you can start you know. Um, tweaking, modifying, improving, and biohacking your biological age or your overall health performance. So through that, you're kind of learning about you know various aspects about your biology. So whether you want to deep dive into your liver health or you know brain health and anxiety and so on, or whether you just want to know more simply about your lifestyle interventions, diets, hacks, supplements, and so on. That's kind of the platform for you. And so far, it's really very very. You know, kind of fundamental biology driven, but in the next iteration, we're also integrating that with you know all kinds of wearable devices. So you, in addition to kind of having that biological fundamentals, you also see kind of real time insights how your stories are changing, how you can start kind of fine tuning your biological marker,、uh, markers, and you know hopefully aging younger. That's kind of what we do. So would people be able to contribute their Medical test results, their wearable data,、uh, other health information that they collect, and how would they go about doing that? Yes, so that's an excellent question. So so far, so it's a stepwise, you know, kind of、uh, development. And it is a startup, so we're we're、uh, you know we've been working on this for a few years, but it's just now that we're starting to go on the market. Um, and so the first, let's say, phase of new was that we have our own test kits, we have our own labs, and so on.、Uh, and, and so you basically get your your analysis done through us. But we're we've just launched, I think, a few days ago, the ability for you to upload your own data, whether you've done you know regular annual health checkups with your blood analysis, or you've done your you know gene, genome with Twenty Three and Me, or any other labs. Uh, you know, when you've got your microbiome data, the problem with microbiome is usually you don't get raw data information from other service providers.、Uh, but yeah, I mean, basically, from a few days ago, you can actually start uploading your own historical data and see your trends through time. In the same way, you kind of build your digital twin and get into kind of your longevity recommendation、uh, aspects of, of the story. So,、um, good question, yes. Yes, and that's an excellent ability for people to have because. I know, for me, it's the case that I've been to a variety of medical providers, and I also collect certain data on my own. It would be nice to have some sort of central repository、uh, of that information and some analysis of it in an integrated way.、Uh, whereas an individual medical practitioner only sees、uh, perhaps one aspect of it. What Tests that particular person ordered、uh, for the patient. So, I'm interested in what you do to kind of pull all of that information together. Once you have it, how do you translate it into actionable insights for people? Yeah. So, first of all, excellent question, but also most importantly. Really happy to hear that. Like what 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 you what you were saying for yourself, because that's really where we see new as a platform as our mission. Right? Is we we really you know the way we're building the platform is really to be that enabler of these let's say longevity opportunities or health optimization opportunities. Right? So unlike most others, first of all. We are very big believers of the power of this longitudinal data of of building your kind of knowledge base of your health as it evolves through time, right? But you are your data. You are the owner of your data, right? So the problem is many times, kind of, you either do your health checkups with labs or you know private companies and so on. They own your data, right? You you only get to see bits and pieces, and it's in chunks, right? 
So in our case, we've built the platform so that you are the owner of your data. We're just your repository where you safely store it. And through the engines, through the platform, through our algorithms and AI and so on, we help you decipher that and visualize that in a very actionable and fun way. But at all the time, you control the data. So you can, you know, it's like a bank, you know, as long as we can be the best possible service provider for you to appreciate your data, you are, you are with us as, as, as soon as we can't, you know, we can basically just download back your data and, you, and you know, delete your, your profile and you're, and you're out. So that's kind of the first part question answered. Uh, maybe uh, it's really important first for us, for people to understand that they are the owners of their data and it's our mission to help them aggregate that and, and track that through time, how they can start, you know, fine tuning, optimizing, improving, etc. That's, that's the first part. The second part is, you know, what do we actually do with that? How do we actually crunch the data, right? And so, there again, it's a combination. I mean, it's a lot of science behind that. So, we have a team of, you know, MD, PhD, uh, clinical geneticists, microbiologists, uh, biotechnologists, uh, bioinformaticians, biostatisticians, uh, data scientists, and so on. So, it's, it's a very, very kind of science plus data focused company uh, we also do a lot of ml you know some machine learning ai etc but i can tell you so despite all that's going on out there in the world with you know kind of ai revolution it's amazing we're, we're excited about it but the ai cannot yet really properly crunch your data to truly understand what's going on right so we still use you know we've done a lot of work in the past few years to kind of really try to kind of cross correlate all this complex data so unlike again other companies who just look at your genetics and like what's your gene potential or whatever or they just look at your blood or you know right now you have some inflammation and high lipids or whatever no we, we analyze things and cross connect and integrate and cross correlate and see how that how that relates to certain types of you know risk factors in, in your kind of you know within your age brackets like you know plus minus seven years and so on to really understand what are kind of the drivers the health drivers where you are above your your average where you're maybe below your average which things are driving your health risks further and so on so even if you look at your your biological age clocks which is you know all the talk of, of, of these kind of you know few days of the conference yes we measure your biological age for sure you can see your you know epigenetic age your blood age your microbiome age etc but we also combine that into kind of a unified age however when you go into your blood age it's not just a number you actually see which are the contributing factors to it what are what are the drivers of that number which are which biomarkers are making you older or which are making you younger compared to your peers so then you have actionable insights how you can start fine-tuning and tweaking those individual markers. And there's a really this cool feature that you can zoom in and out in your kind of biomarker levels and see kind of what lifestyle changes, diets, hacks, and so on are there that you could be doing in order to optimize those things, right? So again, what we try to do is use a lot of really rigid science and every statement that you will find there, like when you go down to a gene level, or whether you're at the liver or brain or heart level or whether you are at a whole body level what the statements you're seeing all of that will see scientific reference you click on those you get to actual clinical and scientific papers behind those studies and research and analysis so again we really try to make sure that when you're in the app right and you see some stuff oh this improves such and such right where's the evidence and then you can go and see the evidence and you can see the strengths of the scientific literature behind it, right? So it's, if it's done, if it was done on mice or on actual clinical trials on, you know, maybe five people or tens of thousands of people and so on, right? So it's really important that we're very, very high, heavy science-based, but at the same time, we try to make it as simple and as fun to understand, as engaging, that you can actually do something actionable to start kind of fine-tuning and optimizing your biology. And again, it's it's not just all about longevity, right? And it's also not just about the health span, which of course it's, it's one of the primary missions. But we do a lot of work with you know, young people who are into sports, professional sports, or who are just into college, or 
you know, high-flying professionals who are working hard days and days, you know, there's fatigue, brain fog, burnouts, and so on. You want to you want to figure out how can actually also, you know, kind of aid to that current maybe overburden of your system and make sure that you are not doing too much of a long-term damage, you know, reduce that fatigue, improve the you know, improve the recovery, etc. etc. Yes, and I know many people who would benefit from those kinds of insights, and I'm glad that you're offering links to scientific studies to back all of the recommendations. I'm curious about your inclusion criteria for the research that is cited on your platform. What ways do you have to filter out reliable research from perhaps less reliable research? Yeah, so, so thank you so much for, for this question. So for now, again, you know, it's a, it's a stepwise iteration of the platform. So for now, basically you just see every sentence has a reference and you go there and you see the paper and so on, right? Um, our algorithms behind do a heavy, heavy work on making sure that those papers are heavily scrutinized. So what we do is we look at the impact factor of the journal, the p-value of the statistics, so how, how you know, strong the statistics, whether that was a clinical study on humans, whether there was a, you know, an in vivo study on rats, or whether there was an in vitro study on cells, how many subjects, what's the end number, you know, was it maybe 50 people versus 10,000 people and so on, right? So we already have all of that, so only the most relevant strong data is shown that as there is a reference, but in the next iteration of the platform, which is coming in a month or two, you will actually see directly the strength of science next to the, you know, next to the evidence. So you will actually see whether that's you know, a clinical uh, study, you know, human clinical study, uh, great uh, science, or it's uh, you know mechanistic, in vivo, in vitro, etc. Right. So, so again, really good question. We make already now we make great effort to make sure that only stuff that is truly relevant gets pushed forward. But very soon you will actually be able to see the grade of science behind it. Yeah. So we'll actually have all the sliders behind, not just the data behind genes or microbes or markers, but also behind all the interventions. So how much do we actually know about broccoli and, you know, sulforaphane inside broccoli and so on, right? You know, there is some literature, but how much of that is clinical, how much of that is animal, and how much of that is just cell-based, right? So all of that will be very, very short with seen through, seen through the platform as well. Yes, it's excellent that you're going to be offering that level of transparency and that level of education for the users of the platform because they're not just going to be learning about their own health, they're also going to be learning more general insights about the state of the science. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that the general public needs to know a lot more about. This could encourage healthier living and boost longevity uh, just in the fact that people will have the wherewithal to make better decisions. So I'm curious, is your service available to people anywhere in the world or just in certain countries right now? Yeah, so thank you for the question. So um, right now we are fully operational in the Netherlands. Um, that, you know, we're a Dutch-based company. We are also uh, fully functional in London, in UK. UK unfortunately has a, so many different you know kind of areas that infrastructure is not fully covered yet uh, in terms of so our limitation you know to be very direct is in terms of blood testing right so so maybe to take a step back so our platform has two components one component is test kits that or 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 you know data that can be done via test kits which is saliva for genome, epigenome, and so on, and stool samples for the microbiome. This can be shipped anywhere in the world. And if you already have the data, it's just digital. Just send it across, right? So if you're from Brazil, US, or, or you know, anywhere else, um, you can go online, order our test kits, get the test kits by DHL, you know, submit your samples, and you have your, your twins starting to be assembled. Uh, if you have your data, you have just the digital upload part, just send it up, you start assembling your twin. Now the second component of your, of your profile is the blood, right? And so the problem with blood is that 
you know, those at home test kits with finger pricks, they're fine for very niche applications, like maybe you want to get certain type of vitamin levels or, you know, maybe magnesium or, or whatever. But if you really want to deep dive in terms of longevity markers and what, how your, your system really works, you can't do that or, you know, with, with a few drops of blood and uh, you know, shipping by post. So you really, we really have to work with you know, local infrastructures. In some, some places we have a network of nurses, in some places we, have, we partner with local labs and so on. So depending where you are, that's basically the infrastructure that then you know, works with our customer support team and then you know, the, uh, you know, the, the app uh, that, that you know, takes you to, the, to get the blood done. So again, going back to your question, if you are in Netherlands or UK, Sweden and so on, um, we can analyze all of that. If you're elsewhere, you can still sign up for the, for the whole platform, but then in that case, you would need to still be a little bit proactive and go get the bloods done yourself through any type of private or public vendor, and then you can just upload your blood profile and then you get the, the complete digital twin kind of uh, you know, uh, analyzed and the whole kind of you know, platform experience. So, long story short, Yes, we can provide the services globally. Um, however, in some countries we can actually get, you know, take you by the hand and just get everything done. In some countries it requires just a little bit more proactivity so you can get most of this done via our test kits or even if you already have the data, but a little bit, especially the blood needs to be done a little bit more uh, actively or something. Yes, thank you for that clarification. And I think for patients in the United States, they could still readily avail themselves of your platform because it's possible in the U.S. to go to a facility like LabCorp is a popular facility Absolutely. or Quest Diagnostics Absolutely. and get a report yeah. of one's blood test results and that report is the property of the patient so Absolutely. the patient can share that information with you, others you, exactly you just upload that security to our system our ai then just basically then deciphers recognizes all of the data and immediately integrates it into your digital twin so absolutely to your point you know wherever you can get that done easily i mean it's, it's basically just the same uh, so you get all the instructions of all the biomarkers that part that are part of our analysis you know you go to your local lab and it's just you know a simple upload mm -hmm. so very easily done. Wonderful. Now I wanted to ask you, since you've been here at the Longevity Summit Dublin, you've experienced the first half of it. What are some noteworthy observations that you have about it? What particular events or topics or speakers uh, struck you as being the most interesting or intriguing? Yeah, it's a good question, and, and I, I, I must say I really enjoy, um, you know, seeing how the, the industry has matured in the last uh, years. So I started my journey actually more than two decades ago. I did my PhD on rapamycin back then when we were still thinking it's, a, it's an anti-cancer drug. And, uh, you know, um, nobody has been discussing longevity back then yet, right? So when I was naively asking questions about why don't we do something about the re repair mechanisms that we have, you know, as part of our genetic fundamentals, you know, big pharma guys were you know, all uh, furious about, you know, the, the aging is just not a, a recognized disease. We can do something about Alzheimer or Parkinson, but aging is as it is, right? And so the field has really matured over the last few decades, and especially in the last few years, I think that there is a second degree of maturity now coming, that um, you know, initially there was the kind of the hallmarks of aging, and you know, uh, the you know the green age epigenetic clocks and so on, um, which was required for us to get the excitement going. Now there's a le a little bit of that, let's say, appreciation that things are a little bit more complex than we initially th thought as well. So we're starting to kind of congregate on, you know unified understanding that a lot is known, a lot is still unknown, but it's definitely, you know, a field that has been, um, let's say, fundamentally shifted our understanding of human health, right? So I, I almost call it like the third era of medicine or health, right? Because initially, 
you know, from, from ancient Greeks and, you know, I don't know, Egyptians even, you know, we were able to mend things by stitching things together or cutting, cutting things away, right? And then we had the Louis Pasteur and all the kind of, you know, from antibiotics to microscopes and so on. We were kind of in the second phase of, okay, now we are trying to identify people who've fallen ill, right? They have a disease, they have a sickness, and then let's give them interventions, drugs and so on to bring that a little bit down, right? And now we're entering that third phase where we actually go after the root cause, right? And there's been this huge frustration of the pharma, like for decades they've been trying to develop drugs for Alzheimer, for those, you know, uh, amyloid plaques, etc., etc. And, and the problem was they were not go going after the root cause of the disease. They were trying to kind of get rid of the plaques, they were trying to get rid of, you know, right now what we're trying to do with this new approach is deciphering who you are, what's going on, what is driving that, let's say, maybe very, very subtle um, disturbance, right? Inflammation, maybe this, you know, unease of the cell, and let's get it back to optimal levels before an illness comes along, right? And so, even if we don't yet talk about that true, you know, complete rejuvenation, right? Even though I think that that is coming very, very shortly. But we are at least unified in this idea that we go, that we start to really go after the precision interventions, and we go after the root cause of illness and disease, rather than trying to just think about drugs to treat something that is already damaged. Yes, and indeed, it is a major paradigm shift to try to address the root cause. One of my frustrations with contemporary mainstream medicine has been that sometimes the standard of care is just to prescribe a drug to treat the symptom yep. when one really wants the problem to be gone, one really wants the body to be functioning as optimally as it could be rather than just keep taking a medicine to suppress the symptoms, but then that medicine may have side effects and may lead to other health complications later on. Yeah, for sure. No, I mean, like I can tell you, like, you know, um, and again, maybe with a disclaimer, because when we were pre-market, you know, while we were still in the pilot phase, right now we, we really position you as a wellness app, right? So we help you to stay well, we help you to, to, to you know, uh, optimize your, you know, your health and, and performance and so on. Um, but in the pilot phase, you know, we were really exploring all kinds of, you know, uh, possibilities with this type of systems biology based approach, right? So I can give an example of, a, you know, a couple of clients, uh, a couple of pilot participants who signed up, you know, uh, they were recently prescribed statin drugs by their, their doctors. And uh, as it turns out from the, from the, you know, digital twin analysis of their biology, these statin drugs were very, very highly likely uh, to cause severe, uh, serious, uh, you know, heart conditions probably within a very short period of time, right? They had completely just the wrong the genetics, right? Um, so, you know, when, when that data was, 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 you know, highlighted and, and you know, of course, uh, uh, with the consent, you know, doctors were, were informed, um, first of all, doctors were very appreciative, change the regime and so on, we could prevent potentially the wrong intervention, but the doctors became our clients as well because they were really, really keen to see how this style of systems biology based approach could help in the future drive even more proper health promoting precision medicine, right? So again, maybe just as an, as, uh, as an extra disclaimer, we're, we're not a medical platform at this stage at all. Uh, you know, we are a wellness app, but, uh, but you, can, you can see how many errors we are currently doing in the, in the current medical practice today, as you're mentioning, in terms of just this generic one-size-fits-all approach, maybe then let's see half a year later how it works or not, right? Yes, indeed. And I'm sure the vast majority of doctors would want the best outcomes for their patients, and if this information could help them make more customized recommendations that provide those better outcomes, uh, they would be happy to avail themselves of it. But 
I really see what you're doing as helping to inaugurate the era of personalized medicine, which we really need. As you pointed out, each individual's body will respond a bit differently to particular treatments. I would say, I would say mostly particularly the era of personalized health. I think, you know, ideally we should have less and less need for actual medicine intervention. I think we should, I, you know, we're not talking about acute, acute you know, you have, uh, you know, a, a car hits you or you, you know, you fall down, a, you know, stairs or, you know, you break a leg. But I'm talking about this chronic illness, right? So there, I think we really should primarily start fo focusing on, and again, a lot of people are already talking about this, these terms, we've been talking about them for years now, you know, to, to move and shift from the current state of, we, we call them, we call it sick care, right, really, into a proper health care, right? So it's not just about precision medicine, it's really about taking care that you stay healthy. So healthcare, preventive, you know, personalized uh, with, you know, all the kind of, you know, you really know what's going on and you optimize your health at any stage in life, you know, for kind of best performance and for optimal health span and longevity. Yeah. Yes, personalized preventive healthcare. I like that. And thank you very much for speaking with us today. I would highly recommend for all of our viewers to check out new and the services that your platform offers. Really, thank you so much and I appreciate and uh, we'll be very happy to accept any, any new members to, to, to the platform. I think it's, a, it's an amazing movement that is happening today. So uh, we're really like, uh, you know, we, we're really proud to be part of the, the, you know, the let's say that the, I, I think a shift in the way we approach uh, health um, overall. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.